In this video, I'll show how to add components to an assembly. As we've seen in previous videos, assemblies can be comprised only of profile members, or consist of only components, or have a combination of profile members, components, or spans. For a simple example of an assembly of just components, I'm starting with a curvy road along hilly terrain and one street lamp component off to the side. The goal is to create an assembly that will line a group of street lamps along the road. In order that the street lamps will be oriented the correct way, it's important that the component axes are set the right way. I can see a component's axes when editing it, or I can keep component axes permanently displayed. I'll open the Model Info window to the Components tab and check the box to show component axes. I'll zoom out a bit to see them. With the axes set this way, the street lamps won't be oriented correctly. A component's positive red axis needs to point along the direction of the path. So with these axes, each light fixture would point toward the direction of the path rather than face toward the street. So I'll need to reset these axes. I'll right-click the lamp component and choose Change Axes. I'll move the origin to the front point of the base, set the red axis to the right, which represents the path direction, and finally, set the green axis so that the blue axis remains vertical. Now this component is ready to use. I'll open the assembly dialog and enter the name Street Lamps. There won't be any profile member in this assembly, and I'll go to the Component tab and click the plus sign. There will be only one component, which I'll name Street Lamp. To pick up the component, I'll click Pick from Model and use the eyedropper to get the lamp component. Its height is listed here. I'll keep the first placement option checked, which means components will be spaced all along the path. I'll enter 15 feet for the spacing and keep Max unchecked so that all lamps will be exactly 15 feet apart. If Horizontal is checked, then the 15 foot spacing will be maintained horizontally. Otherwise, the spacing distance will follow the 3D distance between components. With these settings, I'll use Smart Path to define the path and click Build Along Path. The zero rotation angle means that each lamp is angled to face perpendicular to the path, and Stay Vertical keeps each lamp vertical. The spacing between each lamp is 15 feet, except between the last two. I'll select this assembly so that I can see what happens when these settings are adjusted. I'll change the spacing to max. This disables the options for components at the start and end of the path, because with this option, components are placed at each end automatically. I'll also uncheck Stay Vertical, then Apply. Now the spacing between all lamps is identical, and a bit less than 15 feet, and the lamps are now perpendicular to the terrain. I'll go back to Vertical, uncheck Max, and remove the post at the end of the path. When I change the layout from From Start to From Middle, and remove the lamp at the start of the path, I now have one lamp at the center, and a spacing of 15 feet in both directions. I can change the rotation angle to 90 degrees, to turn each street lamp. Or I could choose Random Rotation. Random doesn't make much sense for street lamps, but it can be useful when placing trees or people or other organic components. Finally, after going back to zero rotation, I can add a negative left-right offset if I want to move the lamps to the left while facing toward the direction of the path. And a negative up-down offset can be used to sink the lamp base underground. Global keeps the vertical offset in the blue direction. For an example of a more complex assembly, I'll go to the Samples folder and bring in the 2x6 exterior wall. I'll click Build and click along a path that has one right turn relative to the path direction, and then a left turn. There are four profile members that follow the path. One bottom plate, two top plates, and exterior sheathing which I'll delete to make the components easier to see. The red insulation are spans that run between stud components, and I'll delete these as well. What's left are five components. Two are insulation, which I'll delete. Stud components are placed along all path segments, at start and ends, and at left and right junctions, where the path takes a turn greater than the minimum junction angle of 60 degrees. The left corner stud is placed only where there is a left turn and nowhere else. This is a single stud turned 90 degrees. 
If I remove the left corner stud, just that one stud would disappear. Going back to the studs profile, I can remove the left junction studs as well. What's left are the studs at their usual spacing. Now let's see how to create something like this from scratch. Here's the 2x4 profile which I'll use to build both the profile members and components of a stud wall. Its dimensions are 3.5 by 1.5 inches, which I'll need to keep in mind later when creating offsets and setbacks. This profile has a bottom right placement point, and I'll assign a material, choose butt joints, click build, and draw out a profile member. In my assembly dialog, I'll assign the name stud wall and add a profile member. This will be bottom plate. I'll pick it from the model and keep offsets at zero since the bottom right corner of this member will be the assembly placement point as well. I'll add another profile member called top plate and change its up down offset to eight feet, one and a half inches to leave space for eight foot studs. Then comes one more profile member called double top plate which is placed right on top of the previous top plate and automatically has the correct up-down offset. The height of the entire assembly includes all three plates. To prepare the stud component, I'll make this profile member into a component, which is automatically named 2x4. I'll rotate it to be vertical. Because this component consists of a profile member, the changes I need to make to this component should be done in the profile dialog so that its parametrics will be maintained. First, I want to change its material. Next, I want to set the stud height to 8 feet. So I'll draw a temporary 8 foot line and use the Extend or Split tool to pull the stud to the top of the line. Now I'll change the axes of this component. The origin will be at the center front, with the red axis pointing to the right, which will be the path direction. The green axis points behind, so that blue points up. I'll display component axes to make sure that all looks okay. Back in the assembly dialog, in the component tab, I'll click plus to add the stud, name the component, and pick it from the model. I'll set its spacing to 16 inches and uncheck max. I'll keep studs at start, end, and junctions. For offsets and setbacks, it's often easier to draw out the assembly first in order to make the needed adjustments. I'll click build, and draw out a path with a right turn and then a left turn. The first change to make to the studs is to add a positive up-down offset of one and a half inches to bring the studs to the top of the bottom plate. I also need to add a start setback of three quarters of an inch to push the left edge of the first stud to be flush with the plate. Since stud spacing is fixed, all studs move three quarters of an inch to the right. The end setback must also be positive three quarters of an inch. A positive setback means that the component will move toward the center of the assembly segment, whether at the start or end of the segment. A negative setback on either side would move the component away from its segment. Junction setback controls what happens where the path takes a turn, and I'll set this to positive three quarters also. At the right turn, the studs look correct. But at the left turn, I don't have the right configuration, so I'll need to use the Advanced Setback options. Pre and post setback values control what happens before and after the path takes its turn. All of the pre and post setback values reset to zero, but since both of the right junction values were already correct, I'll replace these both as three quarters. When I apply, nothing changes. For pre left, I'll measure the distance I want to move this stud four and a quarter. I'll use the same value for post left. Now I want to add extra studs at both right and left junctions. I'll zoom in on the left turn and bring in a two by four from my in model collection of components. Before placing it where I want it to go, I'll make it unique and name it two by four left. I'll use the profile dialog to change its material so that it will stand out from the others. Now I'll place it where it needs to go, though this is just a placeholder for reference. I'll set its axes so that the origin coincides with the path corner and the red axis points in the path direction before the turn. In the assembly dialog, I'll add this as a new component called stud left and pick it from the model. I'll also set it to appear only at left junctions. 
I need to keep the up-down offset, but not the left-right, and junction setback is also zero. Start and end setbacks aren't relevant for components that only appear at junctions. I can now erase the placeholder component, select the assembly, and apply. Now I'll do the same for the right turn. I'll bring in another 2x4 left, make it unique, and name it 2x4 right, then move it into place. The axes in this corner are a bit more complicated. The path turns at this corner, goes in this direction before it turns, and so green goes off to the left. I'll add this as a component called stud right, pick the new component, set it to appear only at right junctions, and now I only need to remove the left right offset. I'll erase the placeholder, select the assembly, and apply the change. Finally, the minimum junction angle controls where junction configurations are used. With the current setting of 60 degrees, any change in path direction greater than 60 degrees will result in the creation of a junction point. I'll edit the path by double-clicking the assembly, then clicking Edit Path. I'll rotate this segment 45 degrees, then close the path. Because this angle is now less than 60, this corner is no longer considered to be a junction so the studs use their continuous 16-inch spacing through this corner. Now that my stud wall assembly is set up the way I want it, I can erase everything, draw out a path for a new set of walls, and build. Each corner has the correct corner stud. And before closing the file, I'll be sure to save this assembly. In the next video, we'll look at adding spans to an assembly.